Yeah, because yeah. I remember fighting. I remember one fight I had with some guy, and uh, and uh, I think uh, he pushed me to. I was, I was, I was. Do you know, like I had to control this thing at a very early age. Uh, people used to press my buttons, yeah, and I would lash out. Killer, killer, podcast. KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the KellerVision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox Creative. Killer Killer. And we here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Uh, big shout out to GraffitiKings.co.uk. Uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct. Central London on Central as you need to be, all right? Subscribe, share. Sharing is caring. And if you haven't checked out the television app yet, 24-7 street culture and stuff for your street sports, we're in it. Uh, big shout out to GraffitiKings.co.uk. Uh, and uh, inside the house today, um, goosebumps all over the place. You know what time it is. We've got a legacy holder inside. Foundations crew, mighty ethnic, some c- crew. C- c- I mean, kings rule everywhere. I mean, what kind of a name is that? <laughs> Facts. We have got an OG. West London's legendary scam inside oh, the yeah. place. You good? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm not too bad. Yeah, good. Good. It's sunny, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's yeah. a good day. Sun's out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Perfect, yeah. Time, perfect time for talking some b-boy shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah let's go for it. <laughs> it wasn't a bad intro, was it? I mean, like, it's really hard to uh, uh, it's, it compact yeah. all the things that you've done over your, your career. I think I've been in and out of bits, of, you know, like, especially growing up in, you know, the times we did, everything was kind of new mm. and scenes changed so fast, you know, hippies, mm. mods, skinheads, rude boys, yeah. you, you know, jazz funk, it's, you know, soul boys, it's everything, every year was something different. You know we're talking yeah. to an OG, he just already, he's already set me up, I'm like, right, go, <laughs> he just wind it up, off it go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, you've, this is the thing with, um, with, you stepped in so early into the culture, you saw this, you know, it was, it was running in tandem, all these different genres that were passing. I I kind of think I was in a sort of melting pot of it all. Uh, just, you know, the environment I grew up in was like, it was really run, sort of run down. And there was so much stuff happening around me, you know, like from carnival, reggae, mm. uh, hippies, just all different, you know, like new wave, everything sort of going around you. I mean, especially in the sort of Notting Hill. Notting Hill was like, you know, you had everyone there sort of like, it's the only place where all immigrants was accepted, yeah. you know, gays, lesbians, everything, you know, hippies, everything uh-huh. was just went together in that one point mm. where I think everywhere else of London was kind of a... Uh, Segregated in their own, you know, they had their own little things. They didn't have everything in one sort of Mountain place. Pop, yeah, cliche sound name of yeah. Mountain Pop is true, isn't it? And and Labrook Grove, uh, back in like the mid seventies, bef- prior to any kind of hip hop yeah. revolution, it was very hipster, wasn't it? It's quite the hip place to go and very hippie. It was hippie, it was sort of like reggae. I think you know, like under the Westway, when the Westway was sort of abandoned, they used to have like sort of on Saturday, sort of reggae sounds mm. you know like MCs going off at each other and stuff like that mm. and that's where those guys like Dizzy Heights and all that used to you know there used to be chatters before and that's <laughs> mad and they used to you know all those sort of guys used to be yeah. under the west way giving it <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah did you used to see those kind of events I mean I used to be running around those sort of places as a kid you know because I used to go to school in Oxford Garden so I'd be walking past the west way every day it's a long mm. walk you know I mean mm. kids don't do that when they're sort of seven years eight years old <laughs> walking like you know two miles down the road or something yeah. like that but the whole of Westway sort of like was sort of derelict and sort of run down. So people used to just use it like yeah, the bays in between the bays and stuff before you go. Now it's all commercialised and shops yeah. and stuff like that and businesses. Yeah, it's but true. Back in the day, I mean, if you watch something like, uh, that, what's that uh, film, Ten Green Bottles? Is it something Green Bottles? Ooh, With okay. uh, Danny John Jules, isn't it? Right, right. And it's, he's just running around all like the Westway and all stuff like that in Shepherd's Bush and it shows, you know, like how it used to be back it's in the day. It's quite a cult film that yeah. has all the, oh, let's check that out. Yeah. yeah. I love the old school shit, you know. Yeah. It's really grimy and just like, you know, people throw milk bottles and stuff and like, you know, yeah. that, that sort of environment. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. You hit, you hit a soft part of my heart just before we started when you started talking about um, you, you're growing up and, uh, you know, that that era of yeah. uh, rock and roll and, um, yeah. and, 
you 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 know mucking around with Hawkwind and then them being quite yeah. trendy in the area, which is crazy. Let me. Hawkwind. Yeah, well, I used to live on top of this. Uh, this um, they used to sort of put gigs on called Greasy Truckers, and you know there's like the local hippies and stuff like that, and they they had they I think they put an album together with Hawkwind and stuff like that. But they used to have parties downstairs in their houses, and I was the kid who lived upstairs used to come down when they were when they were all off their nut and sort of bug them and just like you know <laughs> they probably thought who's this bloody nutty kid? Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's amazing. So yeah, they'd be off their nuts, and I'd be like, you know, little kids just bugging them. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was that was that is it is that true? Is it a true account that they were often like on speed high? I mean, was that the do the you know order what? Of the day? I didn't know them sort of like I should, I should just say to me it was just like a group of hippies. So I don't know who was there, but you know, it was like it was, they were whoever was down there was down there. <laughs> That's mad. I've never met anybody that was so directly close to them. Yeah, in that. yeah. Because because this is this is. Like you say, the the stories of the West are yeah. all you know. It, it orbits a lot, of, particularly yeah. with this podcast. It orbits a lot around street culture, black music, yeah. carnival, all those kind of things. Yeah. Very rarely do people uh, recite the the more punk uh, hippie times, yeah, you know, yeah. which it kind of was established as. It was yeah, because I mean, you used to go into the buildings and stuff like that, and I can remember it was just sort of like going through like loads of hippie houses you know like it'd be a squat and it'd be loads of hippies living there and stuff like that I mean before I moved out of my house it was like full of squatters so you had all that hippie stuff going on there but I even think like you know going back to the Hawkins I think Lemmy stayed down underneath me for a couple of months hiding out right. so but yeah but I don't you know as a kid I don't You're remember just it's just stories out, yeah. I've heard afterwards yeah, so yeah. it's like I was like oh is it damn yeah 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 <laughs> but, uh, uh, the name scam is synonymous for in my mind anyway the uh, the 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 lab of growth like front line you know the, yeah you know, and the pit and you know one of the originals that painted trellick and yeah where did it all begin where did that story of scam begin i i do you know what i guess sort of like just growing up in my i don't know i think from when i was like five six i was always doing my own thing running out you know it's like i was running in the streets at that age yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and stuff like that and everyone did in sort of like pascal i think the first time we all got arrested was like i was about four or five and just, you know, just everyone just hanging out in the parks and just, you know, getting lemonade bottles, drinking around the corner, just simple things like that. I think the first time I got arrested on the tracks was, I was about five, yeah. Five <laughs> years old. You know, the Under the Westway, you didn't have like the same kind of fencing, you know, you could just go over there, play on the tracks. And it was just something people, local people did, you, you know, it was open, you went, it was like waste ground. You had the the BR side, so everyone used to just sort of climb over there, throw rocks at each other, and just yeah, just but generally yeah. playing by the tracks. And I think the first time I got caught, they you know, the police were like, "We didn't play on the tracks," and they you know dragged you home or whatever. Bro, you were born into the game. <laughs> you were born into the game. <laughs> what was it like? What was it, I, I, I can imagine it was very misty and sepia now when you think it was about very it. grungy, dusty, mm. uh, you know, grey, very grey. Uh, what smog grey or just yeah, I'd say semi smog. You know, like when concrete hasn't been maintained and it's just over the years gathered dust you know like when you mm. see like old churches and stuff it was pretty much like that so everything was like just dirty and grungy so it's, and the houses around there uh before they you know like if you go on the Acklam side a lot of you know like all the sort of new builds where well, they're not new builds they're from the 70s yeah, but yeah. the houses before them they was like falling apart and you know mm. from the Ratman era and stuff like that so it's it they was all like getting pulled down and what's the craziest thing that you witnessed as a kid Oh, I mean, I mean, I know it sounds really like broad, and you, it's probably hard to come. But but there, there's I'd say being things. in house fires, <laughs> house fires, <laughs> house fires. Yeah, was that a standard kind of? It, there used to be a lot of house fires, but I remember like I used to live in sort of eighteen and nineteen Power Square, and I think around seventy one they had a massive house fire. I mean, someone got killed in there and stuff like that. And I remember looking back and like on my way out and seeing like, you know, like the fire behind me, and that was like kind of. But, I can't, you know, I must have been about four or something like that. And I just remember, like, a f bloody, a bin on fire or something like that inside. I was like, what the hell? This house was full of hippies, by the way, and yeah. stuff like that. Okay, so it was right. like, but we're lucky we lived on the ground, so we got away from it all. Yeah, but yeah, I don't yeah. know, just some image. I don't know if it was a bin or something, you know, like, because I was so young. Yeah. But I just remember that bloody house fire and we yeah. had to stay, like, in some neighbour's house overnight and stuff like that. But that two buildings just burnt down. Like, that was a, probably the craziest thing just I've seen. Just like that. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. Those things do really they yeah. like snapshots in your mind, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. And I, I can actually remember, I was trying on, I think my mum was giving me some bloody... 
kind of hip, making me wear some hippie waistcoat trying it on. <laughs> like, you know, kind of like Afghan kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I know the one you mean. <laughs> I know those sorts. I was trying, my mum was making me try and run on those sort of things. I think they just, I just sort of remember that, you know, sort of linking them being outside and then, I don't know. That's I was funny. so young. <laughs> what, did your, what did your parents think about it? Because, you know, four or five years yeah. old, out on the tracks already. What was, your, what was the parents, what do was you, the feedback? Do you know what? All of us used to just, a lot of our parents were like immigrants and stuff like that, so... They didn't know what, you know, they've, a lot of them moved here and it was just that kind of hippie environment, you know. Yeah. I can remember going into friends' houses and being able to wander in and out of other people's houses and stuff because people used to just leave their doors open. It's that free love kind of stuff. Oh, so it's just a thing, wasn't it? Yeah, was it's just a thing. For, for those and, that are younger than me and, you know, are watching this, it's, it's actually quite hard to contemplate those, those um, environments. Um, you know, it's... You was left to your own devices. Yeah, that's, that's the impression, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, you was left definitely to your own devices. I mean... Nowadays, you know, parents take their kids to school. We used to just wander to school <laughs> in groups. And if we got to school, we got to school. And if we didn't, we didn't. Would that be because as, as immigrant families, majority of them being that way, it, it was almost like just getting by was, in, was, yeah. was, the, was the chore. And having those kind of extra... Uh, considerations or... Quite, I think it was that kind of, you know, we're coming out sort of like the 60s, aren't we? So it was that mm. kind of like free love, hippie kind of environment. So it was all groovy. It's, yeah, everything was kind of like relaxed and just, you know, mm. go to the pubs and, you know... Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know. When did the graffiti kick in? Like, when did hip-hop hit, hit you? Do you know what? I've always kind of done graffiti. I think it's something in the area where people would just sort of pick up a pen and do, you know, like do football we used to do gang stuff mm, mm, <laughs> and just yeah. put, put your gang name up and stuff just yeah. stuff like that and you know you give kids pens and stuff there's, there's a picture of me actually it's, I just sort of found it on the net and it's just it used to be a place called Bower Sprinters on the Muse and there's a bunch of kids were just rolling it all down the roads and I'm just standing there watching it and I just can, rem I can actually remember that day you know like and getting all this paper yeah there. it's sat in front of the tabernacle so everyone just throwing paper down the road and just and there's an actual picture of it and I was like and I'm, it's the back of me just watching it like that and I can actually remember seeing these guys coming towards me with all this paper then getting involved with it later on playing Mad. with it because it's just like oh what's going on here yeah this is cool <laughs> and this is in the middle of the road <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 talk to me about tabernacle talk to me about that era uh tabernacle I mean I used to live on the back of, like, after the fire and stuff, I moved on to 39 Power Square, and that used to back onto the tabernacle. Like, yeah. And that was closed for years. We used to think that place was haunted. We yeah, wouldn't yeah, go yeah. in there because it's like an old church. <laughs> <laughs> and I can remember it opening up for a day, and they had some sort of, like, event going on in there, you know, like, sort of secondhand, you know. And it, I just remember it really smelling like a church, the first thing, and they're just like... You never forget that smell, do you? No, yeah. no. I can, I can remember sort of going in there because you always grew up and it was haunted and stuff like that, and it's, that was in our mind. It was like, don't yeah, go in there, it's yeah, haunted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but when they opened up the tabernacle, it was like everything changed. It was, yeah. you know, totally different. But it started off in the huff. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the the activists got the power square to open up to the public. Right. And then later on, they got to play hut around, like, sort of like mid 70s yeah, yeah. or something like that. And then, sort of like, as the hut went on, it moved from the hut mm -hmm. into the tabernacle. Wow. So. Do you feel like, because again, you're mm. in these junctures where you see these things yeah. take shape and, and the landscape change. It's like yeah. it grows up with you. That, that must have absolutely been a, the, the, the story along your, uh, within your I think the 70s space. to the 80s was the biggest change. You know, like new builds, flats, yeah. like Wessex Estate being erected and stuff. Like Because before then, I can remember playing on it when it's like a building site. And yeah. just, just every, everything sort of grunge. You just have to pass that way to go to school and stuff like that as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And I, and like you were saying, you said something just a second ago that everyone was doing the gang thing. Yeah. So graph and tagging and it, did it, did it, was it before hip hop came about? Uh, I mean, I've, I was, was very sort of solitary. So being growing up in Power Square yeah. was all about everyone in Power Square. You had Cover Square down there. There's yeah. kind of little rivalry going on and stuff yeah. like that. But being in Power Square, no one used, you know, it was, it was like the centre of that kind of area. The epicenter. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like where, you know, you obviously you had All Sense Road, but that was more West Indian, where yeah. Power Square was everything. You know, you had Irish, Spanish, Portuguese. Power <laughs> fucking Square, come on. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, You had yeah, a yeah. bit of everything there. Mad. And it's just, yeah, you know, I remember there was a time when it was just like, Anyone walked in that park, all they would see is glue sniffers. Really? <laughs> was, yeah, people running around off their head just sniffing glue. Is a, like, a little period of that going on. Man. The glue so, sniffers ran. They were always... A, 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 yeah. There was a couple of them at my school, and ah, a questionable character. I never understood. <laughs> where the whole, I think the whole, like, the older lot, they was all on it. Really? <laughs> For a period of time. And some of them just, you know, like a couple of the guys I know who 
they they stayed with it, you mm. know, and I don't know what's happened to them now, but it was the kind of guys, you know, as you're growing up, sort of like in the 90s, early 2000s, mm. you heard they're still on glue, humming, you know. We used to call it, they used to call it humming. Cause humming. It was, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you'd be walking down the road and they'd be talking to cars. <laughs> 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 they'd be like... <laughs> you're like, what the hell? That's like, nuts, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but it did mess up a few people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, how did you come up with the name scam? I'm, uh, I'm rushing yeah. through things because I'll tell you what, we've got so much to I, go through. I used to call myself Slam. Slam, man. And a friend, Johnny V, uh, he was up on uh, Lake and Heath Air Base up in Newmarket. And, as we, you know, we used to have, like, uh, Drew, his his cousins. His, Drew used to be based up there. And uh, Drew from the Mighty Ethnics. So Fucking when he came Mighty up, Ethnics, <laughs> hell tight. He came over with his parents. He's originally from Labrick Grove. Moved to the States. His dad w- was in the Air Force, so they basically ended up back on Lake and yeah. Heath. And obviously, yeah. he's got ties to Labrador. He's got his yeah. cousin, KD. Yeah. So uh, I got to know a few guys on the base up there. And I was always, you know, racking paint on there and stuff. Because mm-hmm. they used to have Rustoleums, Krylons, mm-hmm. which you couldn't get in the UK at mm-hmm. the time. So, mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. so, of course, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this uh, Puerto Rican guy, Johnny V, goes, yeah. You should change your name to Scam because you're always scamming around. <laughs> and that's where it came from. <laughs> How deep were you in the gang thing? I mean... We, we weren't, I weren't like a gang, like... It was just like your area, mm-hmm. you know. You didn't go around fighting people and stuff like that, but we went out around in, you know... Territorial. Territorial. It was like, to, you know, like what you're doing in our area or stuff like that. Yeah. But we used to, you know, like like anywhere, if someone comes into your area, you get to know them, you you know, you get, you get on yeah. with them. So it's just like, you know, we was yeah. a friendly bunch. We weren't like going around starting trouble and stuff, but it's just like... Mm-hmm where we grew up, everyone sort of, yeah, you had little generations, the older lot, the younger lot. It's like, yeah. I guess, anywhere else. Yeah, and it's a positive energy, hip-hop. Yeah. I mean, let's not forget as well, like, you're you're deep in the b-boy game. Yeah. <laughs> now, not, writers, writers nowadays, you can be of any kind of... Yeah, yeah. Re- ...religious musical direction, but... Um, yeah. I always, ad- I always admire the old schoolers like yourself because... Um, or from an old school starting point, because you you really did embrace everything and everything was av- readily available yeah. for you to exploit. You can get on the tracks and paint. Yeah. You could just I do mean, it. dance, I was always into dance from seven years old, I guess. <laughs> and I think it was just like the, the music, you know? Yeah. When you're growing up in the area, I can remember just like always pulling my record player to the window, <laughs> yeah. turn it on full blast just to like, you know, play music out my window, mm-hmm. <laughs> as you do. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, I just always remember sort of like getting into that and just, you know, like even from rock and roll days, like being into like, you know, watching all the Elvis movies and just being influenced by the dance, you know, like their rock and roll dances and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Because I can remember seeing people, uh, this is actually in the tabernacle, I can remember seeing one guy doing rock and roll stuff and it was, you know, all the stuff where they swing you through the legs yeah. and all that and all that stuff on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was in awe of it. I was like, oh, damn, that's really good. You yeah, know, because yeah, yeah. it's not breaking, but... It's kind of a similar thing sliding on the floor, you know, it's not, it's, mm. it's just rolling around on the floor, mm. isn't it, at the end of the day? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but, but. With an acrobatic side to it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And capoeira, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it feels to me, or it sounds to me, um, that you, you had all the components in your DNA to yeah. apply yourself to every aspect of hip hop. It's yeah. almost like you just plugged in. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't rap. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're talking about b-boy, isn't yeah. it? You know, rap is rap, you know yeah. what I mean? But although it's hip-hop, MCing, freestyling, yeah. you know, those those core elements yeah. that, that are practised for nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a bit like beatboxing. You don't make money off the thing, you know no, what I mean? It's no. something you just yeah. impulsively do, yeah. isn't it? I mean, I went through the whole jazz funk thing, like... Uh, you know, doing robot dance and stuff like that mm. to Sheik and, you know, because there's probably bits and pieces we saw from the States, but we didn't really pick up. And, you know, so it, it was just like kind mm. of like really basic robot. I remember going to sort of like discos in the hut in Power Square and everyone would be like in their little section doing their little dance. And that's that, that's what, what really influenced me, seeing the older kids dance. And I used to be like, go home, practice and compete against the older kids. That's beautiful. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, people be doing basic music, just going like, shh. Yeah, you know, just yeah. like left or right stuff. So basic, but it was like a robotic move. And It's crazy. You talk about all these places as, you know, it's second nature to you. Yeah. And, and when you really do boil down uh, the key areas of hip-hop, a lot of it orbited yeah. around the west yeah, of London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you talk as if, like, these are just, like, regular, like, you know, the pit. 
you know, yeah. Acklam Cages, uh, Tabernacle, Trellick. You know, well, these I, are like these are like key places for hip hop. But you, all for me, it was the way I grew up in. There, I was yeah. just like running around, you know, playing. It was a venture, you know. I mean. Going from Power Square to Goulburn Road was, yeah. you know, as, as a six-year-old, it was a bit of a bit of a distance. But yeah. we'd go there and sort of like bank holidays because they used to have like uh, the adventure playground over Goulburn Road, break in there, run around and just stuff like that. And yeah, so it's, yeah, it's just all part of it. I remember as a kid running to the top of Trellick like a nutter. I'm like, let's get to the top, see how far we can see. <laughs> 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 Look, yeah. Looking out there like, right, let's run to the bottom. And there's a fit, there's no way of running up to the bloody top of Trellick. Bro, I'll be honest with you, I went into Trellick for the first time ever yeah. about four months ago. Yeah. And I just, you know, to anybody else going in Trellick, it's just like, an, but you know, it's these stories that yeah. make the thing a cultural... Yeah. Well, you knew people who lived in there and stuff like that. I mean, I used to call it Big Doggy because it looked like a dog, <laughs> you know, like this. Yeah, the dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Used to call it the big doggy. <laughs> like... That was hilarious, the big doggy. I'll yeah. I see some more legacy talk here. Yeah. Um, so Trellick, obviously, you know, it's, it's been under threat for a while. And, yeah. you know, you were one of the first people to pretty much write as an individual artist in there. Right? Yeah, well, I think the non-stop art, I don't Maybe know why. Yes, that's yeah, right, yes. I went a bit later. But uh, for me, it's, I grew up in that era because uh, one of our practice spots was next door to it in Meanwhile Gardens. Mm-hmm. So it was like everything used mm. to be, you know. And I think... Uh, Rich, remember, see, I didn't remember Rich on there because he's a young kid, but he goes, yeah, we used to go down there. You guys used to be breaking in there and stuff like oh, that. So, so, you used to have a little, so you used to have a little breaking spot. Yeah, because it's it kind of cool. Because what's his name used to be there as well? A little scratch professor in the back, cutting, practising. No they used to let us do little things in there and stuff like that. And so it's like when Jams he was, and stuff like that? No, no, so it was more of a practice place. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, but I can yeah. remember a little scratch professor coming there when he was, like, must have been, I don't know, 11 or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, And he used to have like a double deck thing, not two turntables, but you know, you used to get the old. Uh, DJ kind of things and he's yeah, come down yeah, and yeah, practice yeah, yeah. and stuff like that and yeah but you know you, you're just like oh yeah he's the kid you know scratching and stuff like that so yeah, it's so kind of yeah, yeah meanwhile Gala is quite hell, it's, it's quite reserved it's in a bit of the yeah. back end it's, you, so you it's a bit practice. of a no man's land it is isn't it yeah so it's like yeah it's a little kind of I think it's like a pottery some pottery place or something next to it like but he's like yeah we could go down so we used to like always go, you know go down there for practice and stuff like that yeah, yeah. So, the, the Trellick itself is, is, I feel like it's kind of intentionally been run down for over time because when I see photos of it from back in the day, it actually looks pretty well yeah, kept. I think they went through a little, because I think they went through a little phase with like redeveloping it. Because mm. uh, I looked at a piece I did in 95 and when I saw it redeveloped, they had kind of built the ground halfway up my piece. So my piece was actually in the ground like that. Well, that's so, sick, so they've kind of built that's it kind of sick, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of built up over it and I was like, oh. Because I think there's a phase where everyone kind of like didn't go to Trellick so much. So, mm. you know, I think during the 90s or something. No, me and Kiss went down and just did a little piece each and it's, yeah, it kind of got buried into the ground where they mm. brought the level of the ground up and stuff like that. I guess when you had something like, a place like the Pit, for instance, which wasn't too far away. Yeah, from... well, I always went to the Pit or yeah. the, under the Westway because it was like, Westwood, it's yeah. closer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to get to Trellick, you just had to walk a little bit up that hill and turn a bit right and then yeah. go down. So it's like. But you're talking about some of the most dangerous spots back in the day. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, the Westway was a cool place to hang out because you had the cover of the Westway. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, if it's raining or whatever, you just chill there, everyone. You know, it's like they had the football pitches there. Yes, right. Stuff like that. So. Oh, it's weird. I mean, the, 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 the vision of, a, yeah. of, of it, it, magazines use it as, yeah. as a backdrop. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, one of a kind. But I remember, you know, like, there was a time when all those houses were getting redeveloped and that was just known as Mugger's Alley. Right, really? In the 70s, yeah. They were just getting <laughs> Yeah, on. it was known as Mugger's Alley. Yeah. And it's just, like, loads of corrugated sort of alleys, you know, like, because obviously they'd knocked everything down. Mm. So you used to get, like... I think I saw a picture of her. Uh, it's quite funny. It's got the police hanging down, like... Everyone's in front of, like, Acklam, you know, mm-hmm. Sub or whatever they call mm. it now, neighbourhood. or Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, you've got these police, like, just hiding down the alley like that, watching everyone in front of here. It's genius. like... It's <laughs> genius. <laughs> so that see... doesn't epitomise an era. Yeah, huh? it's, it's cool. Photo. It's so... <laughs> One photo. So let's talk about uh, Crew. Yeah. So, because obviously, th- this was... So this was... Because you've been painting with, what, uh, Hate? Foam, yeah, Casby, you did. You were writing with well, the we, likes we, of. We were all like just local friends yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, they're just like okay. homies, you know. Yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 yeah. And as you get to know each other, you know, coma kiss, uh, yeah, yeah. C's, and yeah, you know, all tight. <laughs> See, OGs inside the place. Um, but crew, who was in crew? Uh, crew was uh, crew was like 
First, you had like the Knights of the Turntables, which was Danny John Jules. Mm -hmm. And Danny John Jules, he used to go over to like New York and stuff, go to Fever Club and all that. And then he brought back what he learned over there, back over here. Right. So he decided to do like, you know, uh, Danny John Jules, uh, Sir Jules and the Knights of the Turntables, which was like all the older lot, like uh, Mono Man, uh, guys like Nutriman, uh -huh. Froggy, just all these sort of guys. And, uh, they, was, they used to do, like, the early clubs, uh, like Titanic and stuff like that. And I think, you know, uh, they, I used to get on with them. I, used to, I was the little b-boy. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, I remember Dizzy taking me to clubs and stuff like that, like to Titanic's, to Camden. I must have been about 14 or something like that. Yeah, and yeah, just dragging yeah, yeah. me along. Yeah, yeah, come, come. Yeah, yeah, Flash is playing. Yeah, let's go to the venue. And I was like, yeah, cool. Hang that old <laughs> Master Flash. <laughs> yeah, just a normal night. It's a normal day. <laughs> So I've been doing stuff like that. So that, that was kind of cool because they, they kind of looked after me and, you know, so it's like, yeah, this dragged me everywhere. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did they used to write as well? Were they writers and B-boys? Uh, no, I think the, the, the whole... I mean, I, I first got arrested for writing when I was like, I don't know, it must have been early teens. Mm. And there's nothing to do with like... It was just like tagging, tagging up my area, you know, like mm, gang mm. names and stuff like mm. that. And I remember getting nicked and like, right, clean off the wall, mate. <laughs> like, really, yeah, we're standing there with a bucket of water trying to bloody wipe off permanent marker on the wall <laughs> in St. Stephen Gardens. Like, <laughs> the cleanest part of the whole garden. <laughs> 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 trying to clean it off there. Yeah, that, that, that was the first time. But, you know, give a kid pens back then. I remember just painting stuff and just... You know, all you have to do is look at the Paris Play Hut and it's like mm. the way it's being painted. They, they actually painted it with spray paint. So it's actually got, you know, like when you've got those yeah. old paintings, or like hippie sort of stuff, but they've actually used spray painting and stuff like that on it, like that. Yeah. There's pictures of it and stuff. I didn't yeah. know that. Wow, yeah. fuck. So. Fuck. Um, and again, it just feels to me like if it, it comes down a little bit of luck. Yeah. I mean, you got a slap yeah. on the wrist for that, you yeah. know. And maybe there's a, it was a time, that it was of the, the time for yeah. behaviours and trends to be I mean, the way But you fall in love, you've, you, it's almost I was like synergy. Always, I was always into drawing as a kid from five years old. It was an outlet. I think uh, growing up in the environment I did, I needed an escape. And mm. I was very sort of independent, introverted. Mm. And I used to find my outlet through art and I guess dance. Mm. And, you know, I remember on Saturdays, Saturdays like, just, I said, like, started off, Copying the Mr. Men's, you know, we was about five or six. We'd go out the West End shoplifting and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then come back with our drawing books and just sit there and draw and just yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Wow. Because so we didn't sick. get pocket money. No. <laughs> so everything we had to get would be like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd be out there wrecking all the time and, you know. Yeah. But when you end up in a room with Grandmaster Flash <laughs> or, you know, you get inducted yeah. to a particular crew or something. Yeah. Like these... There must be some synergy yeah. to it where you're like, hey, I'm doing something right, yeah. no matter how wrong it is. I'll take that back. It wasn't Flash, it wasn't there. It was Melly Mel and the Furious Five. There we go, there we go. <laughs> hey, listen, to the point, to the point, absolutely. It was Melly Mel and yeah, the Furious yeah. Five, but I just remember just hanging around with them and they, you know, they're like calling and, mm. you know, I was just like a little kid like, oh, what's going on? Yeah, cool, I'm running around the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? But again, like if you, you've got a rack and get paint and do the da-da-da-da-da, get pens, yeah. and... Then you get enrolled into crew and then you're associated with breakdancing and DJing and you're at a young age. It's almost like synergy. You should be... A... Do you know what? I think everything was normal. Yeah. Nothing was, nothing, you didn't, nothing was out of the ordinary. Uh, you know, you had uh, grown up in that environment. You know, you had friends, parents who were musicians, who was artists. You grew up with like loads of recording companies mm. around you. You know, you had Virgin and, you know, yeah. like the amount of recording studios and stuff like that. Everything was just normal. It's like, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, you've got Keith Allen living on the square. It's just yeah. people like that. And mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, yeah, this person lives there. And Tom Baker lived up the road. I think growing up in Notting Hill, there was a lot of famous people. Yeah. So you, didn't, you weren't really in awe of it all. It was just like the norm. <laughs> yeah, for so. sure. Do you think that's where um, uh, a lot of success within artists, writers, uh, b-boys, MCs, being from that area, do you think that a lot of that was garnered because of the, the association of the media in, in West? Uh, yes and no. I think, because uh, I think for a lot of the time, it had really had a, the area had a really negative tag to it. Right. And there was more, there was more, you know, like if you watch like BBC, they're always, you know, like what went on in All Sense Road or what went mm. on, you know, graffiti in the 80s had a really negative effect. You yeah. can just see like, because it attracted a lot of other people who was 
out doing other things, you know, because mm. a lot of other, you know, tourist writers were coming into the area, so it attracted a lot of other people who weren't really initially in gra- involved in graffiti, yeah. but they were just thugs and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it attracted sure. a lot of that sort of side to it. So it was always, you know, I think uh, growing up in Power Square, I remember seeing every, you know, every two minutes a, a police van had passed one, a blue yeah. wagon to go around the corners, and SPG all the time. So it was just like, I think it was, it was the most policed area at one point. So, really? so it, was, it had that kind of, yeah, that feel to it. I'm saying this is London history <laughs> right here, baby. Um, well, let's get into some Covent Garden. Yeah. Because <laughs> I have no doubt you have many stories of that, that. I mean, Covent, I went, I used to go there in the early 80s. I think this is before it really, really flared up. And, uh, I met people like flash dance and stuff like that. Mm. That's, that's sort of like my early. But I remember when it was just like poppers up there. This is like, it must be like uh, really early. Because uh, 84, I went on tour and stuff like that. So I wasn't involved in London so much in 84, 85. Right, okay. But uh, I think, yeah, just before then, you know, I got to know people like flash dance and stuff like that. And we used to go up to like Bristol, do jams with like the Wild Bunch. Mm, I used to come down to like Labrick Grove. We had this sort of Bristol Labrick Grove thing going on for a while. That is sick. <laughs> And they used to go to our warehouse jams. We used to go to their warehouse jams. I love that. I love that. <laughs> it was cool. They're like homies to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that, mad. That, that was cool. That was, yeah, that was really cool. Just they used to look after us and, yeah. Mm-hmm. There was a good bunch of guys. But obviously they've blown up now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah exactly. That, in, their you know, own, in their own world. So. Well, that's the other side of Leverett Grove. I think everyone grew up with such a negative thing that we was kind of like... You know, there was a lot of talent around us, but everyone was stuck in that level growth thing. You know, oh, where are we going to get our next meal from? Where are we going to get some money? Everything was like, oh, yeah, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing, you know, like the, you know, the talent was there, but the know-how and the business mind wasn't. Gotcha. <laughs> so I think that's what held a lot of people down, you know, because yeah. I look at a lot of my friends who like do music and stuff and they're like, well, I'll give you an example. Uh, Fletch on the Mighty Ethnics. Uh, he did a, I think it was Anastasia, you know, Anastasia rap. He, mm-hmm. he went on a so, so MC Soul Trip or something like that. And he goes, yeah, just give me 300 pound, like, uh, 300 pound uh, session money for doing this yeah, track yeah. or whatever. And, you know, <coughs> the track blew up. <laughs> and he, well, he just got like nifty. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, like, being hardcore hip hop, you know, as a business side of it, he should have melted it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? For, for, for what but, his worth was in, in his craft. Yeah. yeah. But I think now, you know, like, Back then, the mentality is, no, I'm not doing that. It's not hip-hop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yes, but, you know, hip-hop at the end of the day is like any entertaining business. It's entertainment. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Where do you think that stigma comes from, Scam? Uh, I think it's that hardcoreness, isn't it? It's yeah. like that raw, you know, essence, of, which is, you know, I grew up with that raw, like, yeah, just, you know, what's that? Oh, that's not breaking piss off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, but, yeah. But you have that kind of, you know... Uh, it's Purist. Yeah, purist and... I think it's kind of like a bit of arrogance with it, mm. maybe. I don't know. Yeah, because it's it's a very egocentric. Yeah, exactly, thing, <laughs> exactly. Isn't it? Yeah, and like a lot of times, if you're if you're caught slipping the ego of the other people, yeah, you could be doing really well. In fact, you could be like on your in, mm. in, on the incline, but there's something about other people's egos that yeah. might kind of pull you down. Well, I think as well, you know, like when hip hop started evolving and people f- not from the street started mm. getting into it, into yeah. it, you know, like universities got breaking so- uh, societies and stuff yeah. like that. I think just on that little exchange, it's like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you know, it's yes. like, you're not, you know, it's not, it's not the same. It's, it's not the same. It's not the same. But, you, you know, you have to respect it because they're the ones keeping it going. Yeah, for <laughs> You know, sure. if it wasn't for them, there wouldn't be a lot of, a lot of hip hop. <laughs> a lot of hip hop. Yeah. Um, I've talked to a few people about this in, before in the past. Um, you're actually a really good person to... <laughs> You refer to on this, but I, I've, I feel personally like you have to learn the, the, the vocabulary yeah. of of a culture, yeah. and knowing that this because of my age, yeah, because of my color, because of my uh, upbringing, yeah, I I feel like I can't just step in and suddenly yeah. be the best. Blah blah blah. You've got to really love it and adopt to it and yeah and speak the language and know the codes right i think that side of it's lost now yeah so it's like you know because you can watch youtube and a lot of people learn from youtube and you know fair enough because they're keeping it going and stuff like that yeah but uh you know i think what it was and what it is is two different things the the environment's different Mm. and you know uh it's like they've got breaking at olympics now and stuff like that, which is it's amazing. Yeah, this is good for breaking. It's you crazy. know, I'm not against anything like that, but I uh, think for sure, I think uh, 
you know, how we had it was in our time and how they've got it, it's in their time. Yeah. So it's like, it's two different things. You yeah. can't expect to, you know, it's like, it's like an Elvis fan expecting everything to be like the 50s in 2000. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not going to be I'm the same. You. It's not going to be the same, is it? It's like reggae in the 70s, it's not going to be the same as now or drum and bass in the, you know, like drum and bass in the early 90s or hardcore. It's not going to be, it's not the same as what it is in yeah, you know, 30 sure. years later. And one thing I do like is I like the advancement that, you, you know, youth and wisdom, mm. you know, it's the, it kind of, I love it when it m merges. And, yeah, yeah. And people... I, I never underestimate for a second the youth yeah. not knowing what they're talking about. Like, yeah. communication and technology yeah. is readily available and every bit of thing is documented ever. Yeah, so yeah. So they're yeah. actually more on it than anybody yeah. else. But like you say, it's the commerciality, the freedom of just choosing to do something and doing it without too much overthinking. Yeah, I yeah. I think that's, that is the, that's the way, isn't it? Yeah, I think for us a lot, we had it a bit different because we wasn't exposed to all that sort of stuff. And, you know, we had Buffalo Girls and things like that and, you know, Hip Hop History, Wild Star. And we would really research it because there wasn't enough, mm. you know, we had to go and find that stuff and we'd have to, you know, mm. just do, you know, like, we was imitating it, basically. We was imitating what we were seeing and just trying to do it our own way and stuff like that. Mm. But, yeah, it's that as well, isn't yeah. it? Nothing is ever... No. <laughs> but then you, put, you end up putting your own twist on it, you know, yeah. because uh, I can watch a lot of... Uh, dancers like from my group or from other crews mm. and everyone had their own flavor you know with you know they had their own style they had the, you know distinctive stuff because everyone learns their own moves they've got mm. distinctive stuff i mean you can see it now but i think a lot of that character's gone you know uh just i think that, that street element people used to you know walk with a, a swing mm. <laughs> you know mm. little mm. little flavor and have their own little kind of <laughs> yeah. so you used to put it in your dance and you know yeah yeah, so yeah. It's, it's swag, exactly this yeah. yeah it's a bit of swag so it's you know, I remember, people, you know, everyone used to, like, had their own walk. I mean, if I walk, I've got a distinctive walk. <laughs> you know? Everyone's got... I know, so he's coming up the road, I was like, oh, I think that's scam. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's got their distinctive walk, and it's part of your DNA. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and I think you transfer that into, like, your dance and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think, you know, where you've got a lot of kids who aren't from that kind of street element... They don't have that kind of walk. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. If... Um, because everything you do, you want it to be cool. You want it to be, you know. Yeah, you can tell uh, a dancer. Yeah. Particularly break dancers, in their swag. Yeah. It, it's almost um, in. It's like you can't bottle it. It's yeah. I mean, I, I think my early remember. I think the far back as I can remember of it as a uh, dancing was doing like the bop. <laughs> yeah. And everyone would be like bomb, bomb, and I kind of worked out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 Ian, start dancing on the show next. Come on! Yeah. So I kind of used to like go low and yeah. just like just try and do it cool and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah. it looked far removed from the bop. It just looked like something I was doing. Like I don't know. But it's an interpretation, and it's adopting it to your own. Yeah. And if you had all the coordinates, you wouldn't do it the way. Yeah. You're doing well, I think it. a lot of people used to do the bop and go like. Oh. God, I can't even remember. It's like they used to go down, stick my leg out. Then I used to just kind of start sliding my leg here and slide and like just slide in it instead, and yeah. just just bits and bobs like that. Yeah. So. And that shit's advancing at a crazy rate with, you know, the Britain's Got Talents, the X Factors, yeah. the pop idols. They are really like... Yeah. And TikTok and, you know, reels and everyone's dancing at the moment. Yeah, and yeah. These things are adapting. And yeah. You know, I mean, I, I don't really... I try to stay away from the X Factors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. We don't talk... We, you know, no, not that. I'll have to bleep on that thing. <laughs> not that. I don't watch, I don't watch enough no, of it. It's just it, like, it. I'm just like, oh, no, man, hold on. I can't watch this. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> like, I know. It's... it's it's new faces panto, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, I can't, I, I can't, you know, like, uh, don't get me wrong, I like new stuff, but it's just, I'd rather be selective, as mm. you know, and watch it on YouTube or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, we talked about this, you'd see me play at the um, B-Boy Breakdown Show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back in the day. These, these were like figured... The, the you was actually the there. next level of beatbox I saw, I was like, oh, this guy's quite sick. Yeah, <laughs> like, thank you, know? you. I was coming from a king, that's <laughs> fucking awesome. Well, oh. you know, like, thank I've you. come... I've gone from listening to like Fat Boys, Dougie Fresh, and stuff like that, mm. and then I kind of didn't hear about beatboxing for a while, and mm. then you popped up and I was like, "It's another level." <laughs> hey, <laughs> so, yeah. <heard> it <laughs> uh, but yeah, b boying, b boy championships, Battle of the Year. I never went Battle of the Year. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, I, I, I never, never been. I mean, uh, my well, our DJ used to play there a lot, Lacey. I don't know if you know Lacey. Oh, rest in peace, Lacey. Yeah, yeah he used for to sure. play there a lot, and he used to just tell me whatever. I was going yeah. to go there one year with him, and he's going, "Oh yeah, I'm just going to set up a stall or whatever." But I just never got around to getting yeah. to 
back of the year. I don't know. I just... I don't know. I think my second time of breaking wasn't like the first, you know. Uh, the first time we used to do like a lot of illegal warehouse jams and it was just like, yeah, can't wait to get there. Yeah, electrics, yeah, they, you know, stuff like that. And you know, I remember going to Electric <laughs> Ballroom and it was like jazz funk. So first time I went to Electric Ballroom, I just threw my guts up all over. <laughs> or was it just a lot going on? It was, no, I was just uh, having a smoke, yeah. having a drink and just like mega whitey and I was like 14 or something like that I just remember having to run out of little ball like, <laughs> like <laughs> so, I was you know like a lot of the guys I was hanging around with like three or four years older than me up to six years older than yeah. me and stuff like that you know mate when, when you talk about ages and times and that you were <laughs> and how old you were when you were doing them again it's it's you've had so much life yeah. For, for the ages that you were doing these things and I'm, getting into the scene. I mean, as a kid, I was, if I went out of the house by midday on a Saturday, I thought I'd wasted the whole day. That was like, I've got to be out of the house, you know. Now I hear kids just sitting in their houses all day. It was like... Yeah, I feel I need that. to get out there and do, you know, adventure, get up to no good, get up to, you know, everything was like, yeah. you know... Starting, we used to be in the square. Bloody, I remember digging moats around there. Like, like, yeah. Just yeah, let's dig some holes and let's yeah. dig moats and let's, <laughs> let's hammer some nails in. And we used to like have campfires going on. Everyone would be sitting around campfires and like you know, just you, being you, productive. You, you couldn't do that now. No, 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 no. There's a ton the, of health and safety. No, the environment's different. You know, you'd be there and uh, you'd have people like Boots from you know banging out steel steel bands, uh, making drums and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. for the carnival and stuff. Yeah. And so you'd be like hearing it all like, some like people going, bong, bong, tuning it in. Bong, 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 bong. Crazy. <laughs> I'm stuff. surprised you haven't gone to the Battle of the Year, actually. When I'm thinking yeah. about it, more thinking about it now, I'm like, that's an epicenter do, of... Uh... Do, do you know what? I, I think a lot of it as well. I think growing up in Notting Hill, we had everything on our doorstep, so we didn't yeah. really need to venture out too far. Do you think that was a London trait? Because, uh, you know, uh, you talk about going to do Bristol you, and stuff, but... Yeah, the, I, th the, I, I think a lot... I complacency, think that, maybe? Well, I think, you know, like nowadays, you've got kids and they, like, they can't go up the road down from one estate to the other state, you know? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, so true. messed up. Yeah. But I think back in the day, it was more... West London, South London, East London, North London. You didn't, you know, oh, it's full of, you know. Had... South London was always popping, though. Yeah. That, but, that's up there with uh, West. But I think there's that territorial thing where a lot of people didn't want, you know, like people from West didn't want to mix with South and, mm. you know, people didn't didn't travel as much. But why is that? Why, you know. I think it was territorial. I think it was a lot of territorial. It's, you know, like, it's probably stems from football. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Arsenal, Chelsea, what we'll keep here, what, you know, mm. every, you know, skinheads, it's, you know, gangs have been going for years, hasn't it? You know, mm. even bloody rock and roll, Teddy Boys, they had to, gangs from Teddy Boys yeah, days. Yeah, mods so. v rockers yeah, and all that. Yeah, all that stuff. So I think, I think it was just a general thing like West London, South London, you know. Uh, yeah, because it's always kind of West and South, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it really was. Yeah. Because East... I mean, you know, East has become synonymous for uh, for grime music and yeah. take their take on it. And but I think, I think people just didn't travel as much. I think because I think East was kind of. I mean, I used to travel a lot as a kid. Hmm. I remember going on trains to Emerson and stuff like that. Just... Well, you toured. You said like you were saying when. You oh no, this is just jumping on trains. So <laughs> just, just getting around. <laughs> just oh, going, right, right. You know, like, <laughs> let's, let's just jump on the train and see where we can go. I remember, you know, I don't know who else used to do. We used to do like red bus rovers, just get buses into the countryside and crap like that. Red bus rovers crew, come on. <laughs> come on. You comment below. Yeah, it's, uh, we used to just get on buses and travel and stuff like that. And I mean, I used to, I used to go over south a lot because I used to do a lot of stuff for the uh, Hip Hop Connection magazine. So they used to get me doing stuff in the rec centre, dancing and stuff like that. Sick. I mean, well, that's how I knew your name, oh. through Hip Hop Connection. Oh, okay. And Represent Magazine. Yeah. You know, yeah. these kind of things are yeah, yeah. off the time. Um, is it true that you gave Deal Real its name, the record yeah, store? Yeah, 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 because they were going to call it Real Deal and they were, they were humming about with it and stuff like that. I mean, it was, it was just hangout spot, you know, Pete That's and stuff funny. like that. Yeah, hold tight, Pete. Pete's like the coolest guy, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he's the sweetest dude. <laughs> yeah. And big up Tony as well, yeah. Harry, all these guys. I Estelle keep, meaning, to, keep meaning to get up to watch his show, but mm. it's a breakfast show. Yeah. <laughs> I told him he needs like a, a drive time show. <laughs> yeah, 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 like a five o'clocker. Yeah. Um, deal Real, man. I mean, for anybody that doesn't know what Deal Real is, that he was a... Uh, he, uh, I kind of got to know them when it was in Notting Hill, I think, when it was Handspun. Ah, of course, yeah, Handspun, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because of... Uh, Cook, do you know Cook all? Cuckoo, rings DJ Cuckoo. He ring, I mean, he's I know like the my name. homie I grew up with. He's, right. he's, he's like one of my homies. He used to be in Break Jam and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, so just go up there with him and just, you know, introduce me with Pete, MK, all so those what guys. So what age was this? When was This is 90s. This is yeah. 90s. So um, maybe late been, 80s, early 90s. I don't know. So you would have been, what, mid-20s? 
early twenties. God knows, I can't <laughs> do the math. It's all become one blob of timeline, isn't but it? But it's a uh, yes, maybe maybe around there, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe mid twenties, early twenties. I don't know, something like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, just I think just just going there. I got to meet those guys and yeah, just hanging out with mm. Peter and all those guys mm. and just you know that kind of pulled me back into the scene because mm. I went on the rave scene for a bit. You know, just mm. doing that as what everyone else does a bit yeah. of hardcore. Here yeah, and there, yeah, of yeah. course, yeah. Now, you know that I love that scene. Yeah. <laughs> Searching for muddy fields and <laughs> so you used to do that as well. So the, yeah. So for, oh, hold on, actually, before we go down that road, um, Ling. Yeah. Because you wrote Ling as well, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's how the older lot knew me as Ling, as Ling and yeah. stuff. Like, so it's like, and um, my brother gave me that name from the water margin, from Lin Chung. But back then, you know, it sounded like Ling. So it's, you know. <laughs> nice. So, See, a bit of intel there, a bit of history. <laughs> so, yeah, so everyone called me Ling. And a lot of people think that's my name. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, so I've always gone by nicknames throughout my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And you just used to write them. <laughs> yeah, so not the only lot. They're like, Ling, Ling, Ling. I was like, Shh. I think, as well, I think a lot of people in the breaking scene knew me as Ling in the early days. Really? Yeah, so it's like kind of, yeah, it's, you know, going by two names. Yeah. If I was probably went by the one name, I'd probably be more known. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> Is when what you, it is. <laughs> yeah, and when you say scam again, like look, look what we're dealing with here. We did that name is, mm. is a so like mm. handspun deal, real. Yeah, you, there's your and crew as well. Like these are your DJ B boy. Yeah, foundations of you know, and then you've got the graft, and you've got all these things. Like yeah. scam kind of embodies all of those. Things, yeah, isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trust me, trust me. Um, <laughs> foundations. Yeah. Um, we will get into the rave era, but foundations uh, as a crew and collective, like. Yeah. How how did this all how, for you? How did it come about? It was like I'd, I'd say you know, uh, it was Polsky, Johnny Drills, Kama, and myself. This is a break dancing crew, by the way. Guys. It was like this is like late Covent days, like yeah. eighty six, when everyone kind of stopped breaking, and we're still trying to, you know, the diehards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like. Oh, it is. Let's go, Charon, all four of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a practice. No, day. I'm glad we're on the right timeline here because yeah. we still are on that cover. Yeah. So much, yeah. so many, so much history here. Going, yeah. So what happened? So, what happened? so yeah, we're just all hanging out and just you know, like because back then everyone used to tag. It was just like even if you you know you was a beeble, you had a tag, mm. regardless of how crap or good your tag. So everyone mm -hmm. used to tag up and stuff. But I got to know those guys at the end of the scene, you know, like mm. '86, '87, stuff like that. So it's just. We just kind of held it, held it on. We, we, you know, we were trying to dance and keep it going. And I think, you know, like, but that time sort of breaking was fading out. But uh, yeah, it was kind of fading out. Then we had a little comeback bit where we did, we did a bit of dancing on the jailbreak track uh, for Paradox. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've seen that video. No. Doing a bit of a. I'll a, check it out. Yeah, doing a bit of breaking on that, and then wow. kind of, you know, we just sort of still hung out together and stuff. And, the rave scene came and it took us away, you know, everyone's mm. getting mm. getting a bit naughty at that mm. point. So just, yeah, just got, went away on the rave scene. And when that sort of died down, I just went straight back into breaking and stuff, hip hop. How did it feel? Because, yeah, the like I watch a couple of like BBC, so if, I'm, if I've had a bit to drink, yeah. I'm sitting there watching Old Top of the Pops or something yeah. like that just for kicks, you know. And uh, around that time, there was this crazy transition of the underground being yeah. prominent in the charts. Yeah. You would have like Soul to Soul next to, I don't know, uh, Culture Beat or some shit. Yeah. You know, some European stuff. Uh, Rave was definitely absorbing every other genre, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How I did mean, it feel? How did that feel? I mean, uh, for me, uh, I, I liked because uh, the way I saw hardcore was made was similar to hip-hop. She's in samples. Mm -hmm. But they is basically sampling hip-hop and not sampling breaks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but... Uh, Going back, I, I remember, I think it was a uh, Cross the Road from Quaff. Uh, it might have been in Quaff or Cross the Road from Quaff. It used to be this uh, Speed Sports. Mm. He's, he's used to import a lot of uh, clothing from America and stuff like, you know, all the Gucci tracks, you know, all the fake stuff and yeah, Louis Vuitton yeah. stuff. So he used to have a yeah. shop there. And I remember Nutriment telling me, I think Bertram was down and he was going, he quickly described what drum and bass was before, like a couple of years before what drum and bass was. He goes, he goes, basically, the future of music is going to be like sped up fast, there's going to be mm. sample, crazy noise. And what he basically described to me was like drum and bass, bass yeah. but hardcore and stuff like that and it was just like it was only when it came out that I was kind of oh yeah <laughs> all of a sudden it makes sense yeah it makes sense it's like because I was like what the hell is he talking about mm -hmm. <laughs> at the time but he was a, ahead of himself so wow. so yeah I was like yeah <laughs> you know just another turn point in you know a, a, a spike in the history of path of, of you and like everything that you've 
I don't know. I think with the rave scene, because you used to get a lot of hip house, didn't you? Doug yeah. Lazy and all that uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it kind of you had a bit of a switch over, and you know, a lot of people got drawn into the rave. It was the new thing. It was an escape, wasn't it? The whole UK kind of change, which yeah. is off their nuts on the weekends for like mm. two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've you've always kept a youth youthful standpoint on these things. It's yeah. it, it, it appears that you know to, to orbit back orbit yeah. into rave. Yeah. For the crack. Yeah. Is, is the, you just you love youth culture, don't you? Uh, I, I think I'm just very young at heart. Yeah, you know, I mean, even now it's like people my age. You know, I look at them and you know, I'm up doing high interval bloody training in the morning. Like, bam, bam, bam! I just like to keep fit. Mm, mm. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? It's just like uh, this whole lockdown has been high interval training. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> just watching YouTube doing hits, hits, and just stuff like that, and. You know, I, I can't keep still. I'd go mad. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I've got to run down. I'm a bit of a Forrest Gump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll get built up energy. I just... Mm, <laughs> mm. Yeah. What's your... I mean, without prying too deeply, have you got a space where you can break dance in your pad at your home? I mean, uh, uh, I work at a dance school. Just, That's so easy. So I've got space at a dance school. Yeah. So, so it's, yeah, you know, just do my nine to five there, a bit of sort of like behind the scenes sort of stuff but then when there's a free studio I just wander in there do it but at home as well in the evening you know for uh, I've got to train at least four times a week because it's a muscle yeah creativity yeah. is a muscle well I think if I I think if I wasn't I'd probably be out of here <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah well that's that's a lot of, that was nearly my lockdown diet that was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was nearly me right you know I'm always battling like oh yeah I've got to get back into training I mean, I've got <laughs> now you're all right pal trust me trust me the swag walking in, <laughs> the, the army, trust me, it's fire. Um, so the rave scene happened, and uh, did you get back, did you reform foundations after the fact? You said you went yeah, back, I mean, back we, for a bit. Yeah, we, foundations probably got formed, like, uh, on and off, sort of, like, I'd say, kind of late 80s, faded out a bit and stuff like that. Well, I mean, was, we wasn't founded, we were just hanging out, but so okay. I'd say from, uh, I don't know, it's like, I guess it's sort of mid-90s, we started hooking up again, uh, kind of hooked up with how this one I got to know, know uh, James Lacey and those guys mm. uh, there was around, I think there was around the Covent days and stuff like that we kind of all joined up Sky was around and uh, I don't know if you know do you know Sky DJ Sky oh, means bells again he used to have like more breaks than anyone he really used to, he used to be like he was the breaking Frank's I mean Don. now he's sort of, I think he's not into it anymore or mm. something like that but uh, yeah I heard he sold all his breaks so <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> but he used to be mm. the guy of all the breaks and stuff like that. So, yeah, just hang around with those guys because James got, was getting into a lot of uh, stuff in the States and stuff, you know, doing Pro-Am and mm. just, you know, yeah. all the B-Boy Summit. And Howard was going out to B-Boy Summit and stuff like that, sort of 96 and stuff. So oh, it's B-Boy Summit, what a... <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of that crew from San Francisco? It's going to kill me. Oh, that God. Crumbs was one of the... Break dancers. Uh, oh, different, different from uh, Frisco? Style Elements, Style Elements, style elements. Uh, California, yeah, California, yeah, oh my yeah, God. Poe and all those guys, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those, uh, yeah. <laughs> when I think and of people, Renegades, yeah. Was it Renegades, yeah, yeah, crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I saw them do their thing, yeah, because we kind of hibernated for our ages, and when I saw that stuff, I was like, mm. oh wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of French crews doing it as well. What are they called? Um, Oh my god, that's gonna kill me! Oh, uh, the family and all those guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actual force and actual yeah, force. Yeah, yeah, and the German crew. There was a German. Oh god, this is all bringing back memories now. God. Uh, so many crews just started popping up yeah. everywhere, didn't they? I mean, uh, I remember the out of control lot when out of control when yeah. I was touring Denmark in '84. Yeah, because I was living out there for a bit, and I remember like seeing Steen and those guys and. Kenneth, Wildcats, and stuff like that. And then when mm. I saw him on sort of like uh, the Battle of Years, I was like, oh shit, those guys are still mm. going, you know? Mm. So I was like, oh shit, you know, while well, I've been like. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. In, in raves and stuff, raving it up and all that stuff. And yeah. You had to quickly go and sharpen up <laughs> like, like you've been doing it. Well, so I was like, damn, those guys are like <laughs> next level. Because, you know, I think, I think B Boying in the UK. As it was phasing out, that's when everyone was getting really good. Mm, you know, everything yeah. was getting polished stuff. Combinations were happening. And, mm. you know, you're talking like 87, I think the diehards, you know, just still sort of keep going. That's when everyone started, like, it transitioned to sort of like, it was that little peak. And I don't think a lot of people saw that because it was overshadowed mm. by, you know, house dancing, kid and play stuff and, yeah. you, know, you know, all those kind of Jumping stuff. Jumping over the arms and yeah, kind of... We, we almost felt persecuted. 
<laughs> like, we didn't roll in and run on the floor. It's all about... <laughs> yeah, 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 hype dance and all yeah, that. Yeah, it's of all thing. about that stuff. So we was kind of like, oh, are you still doing that? It's like, because everyone was kind of fashion going. I was like, mm. I'm not into the fashion. I'm into b-boy. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> but then you become the, the grumpy one. Yeah. You? At this point, I'd like to shout out Second to None, Born to Rock, Scarecrow, Sin Stars. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know... All the all the originals and the people still doing it now, you know. For yeah, because you know, like second to none. I, feel, I think it was them I saw in, in Acklam and a few of them in what's that club in Leicester Square? I forgot the name of it. Is it? Uh, Spats. No, like, no one, one Leicester Square. Uh, you know, so it's, remember seeing them in a few jokes because you went to the odd hip hop jams and they'd have a few b boys there. Mm. And you know, it's those guys. that's like oh. They're the level. Mm. Like, yeah, there's, you know, they're, they're dangerous, man. Yeah. They, they, they they gave me like seeing them is like they you know it's like oh those guys are doing it. It's, so mm. it's kind of like yeah, I liked what they were doing. <laughs> it was like a second wave of yeah. uh, of of b boy in it, probably around the uh, uh, ninety eight ninety nine mark. And yeah, I, I think earlier, a lot earlier. Yeah, yeah, it just started coming up. I remember yeah. seeing them in clubs. All of a sudden, clubs were opening up yeah, to the idea of yeah. b-boying. And I think I think those guys, because they didn't stop, they kind of kept it going. And so they kept it being exposed and stuff mm. like that. So, you know, you know, I think a lot of people should give them a lot of props for that. That's right. I'm telling you, man, like, <laughs> b-boying don't get enough talk on this, on yeah. this podcast. So, you know, for the youngers out there, check that shit out. It's fire. Um, and you were also in Bad Meaning Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, which I is still, another seminal documentary. I used to do a lot of stuff for Westwood, like his, a lot of his sort of uh, warehouse, you know, backdrops and stuff like that. So, yeah, I used to do a lot of kind Wicked. of stuff like that. Because you ended up touring and all this sort of stuff. Did, did, did shouts like that where you got exposure on a, on a, a more commercial level? Because Tim Westwood was like, he was pioneering from the jump, doing the b-boy stuff as well as the hip-hop. Yeah. Nigga. You know what I mean? I think, I think Westwood liked the Lever Grove scene. Mm. And because I remember it was like when he was doing blues and souls, and he was like mm. taking pictures of our graph. And uh, I think it drew me somewhere. He was like throwing stones at him, like, wait, get away, stop taking pictures. Because you know, so that's like, he's like, you're putting our pictures in the, in the magazine, where's the money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I think he thought, oh, yeah, that's raw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, totally. So kind of, you know. <laughs> and again, this is where the clash of. Uh, yeah, because yeah, it's like, you know, that's that kind of mentality we had. We are, we're not doing anything for free. Mm, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. We, we didn't care about the exposure so much. It was like, you know, yeah. oh, if you're taking, you're, you're getting money from Blues and So magazine, we want our bloody yeah, money. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Paid. I mean, it's, it's like also the punk scenario where people take photos of the punks, but they yeah. should really be getting paid for the photo. Yeah. It's yeah. the same principle, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like what people do now, don't they? It's in the West End when you get those statues. If you take a picture, you've got to give them some money, haven't you? you? Have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way, right? Yeah, that is one of the biggest mm. biggest arguments in graph. And how do you combat that? How do you? I mean, obviously, it's one different thing if, like, I don't know, Vauxhall or you yeah. know, Mercedes take a you know a, a piece. Yeah, because sometimes you know you'd be like in the shopping port at Portobello. And you see a postcard with someone's graph on there, you know, and yeah. you'd be like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> someone's getting paid." So yeah, we you know they've taken pictures of someone's piece and they're selling it. You know? yeah, 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 for sure. So for sure, without giving the artist any sort of you know contribution of mm. you know not even a thank you. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even do the research. No, no, just oh, that's a nice picture. Make post those cards, yeah. sell them, bam. The same argument where people use graph in their music videos. At least tag, yeah, tag the artists in the. In the I remember Instagram. seeing the, one of my pieces, uh, the bad piece. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and uh, I saw Big Audio Dynamite dancing in front of it in one of their videos. Obviously, B A D Big Audio Dynamite. Of course, like, and then yeah. it's suddenly the penny drops, and you're like, "I've been done." <laughs> yeah, basically I've been done. Basically, like, where's my money? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he only lives around the corner, so you can always go and have a word. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, you grew up in the same bloody place, Power Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, of course, right? Yeah. yeah. and there was yeah this whole this whole punk fraternity. I yeah. Mean, Glenn Matlock doesn't live too far away from here, and all that. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, well, we was always kind of a bit more. We're into soul. We're not into the punk scene. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So is that kind of like. Yeah, what are you doing? You're bloody crusty, you know? <laughs> Can't really dance a punk unless yeah. you're pogoing around. Well, we used to call a lot of them kind of squaddies and stuff like, just, you know, but it's, you go to a warehouse jam, it's full of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. so, uh, I was thinking about sort of warehouse jams and just like some of the early ones which don't really get mentioned. Like, I don't know if you remember the mutons, mutoids, waste people and stuff like that. This is set up like villages and. They did have like a warehouse jam in like Kings Cross in the old. Oh. Could have been like one of the Bagley's places or something like I mean, that. Yeah, I think I've seen like a. a and they like they would build like all right. these like they'd have like water locks in there. They'd build like these bridges going out of going over and all these mad sort of Mad Max vehicles and stuff like that. It's bloody off the wall. That sounds <laughs> insane. It's, it's sick. This is like 
maybe 86, 87. It was really underground stuff. Blade really. Runner yeah. shit. Yeah, basically you go in there and it'd be like, they'd have vehicles like with mad, just look, look, looking like spaceships and stuff like that and building like these uh, bridges over these like waterlock sort of part of the warehouse where, you know, you'd, you'd have to basically, you couldn't walk for it because it was covered in water. So they'd build like these mad bridges, Mad Max type bridges and, and it just looked like futuristic stuff. That's you just blown my uh, mind, bro. That's mad. Yeah, because I don't know, things used to be different, didn't they? Yeah. You could, warehouse jams were, you know, mad. <laughs> yeah. That sounds mad. Yeah. That sounds like some uh, next level cyber dog goth. Yeah, yeah. It was it was like Utopia. cyberpunks, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cyberpunks. Yeah, cyberpunks, yeah. I guess. But just not, a, you know, you probably curse you if you called them cyberpunks. But, yeah. you know, they're building futuristic stuff and, yeah. Mad. Again, just highlighting your, your interest in, yeah. in the creative arts and stuff. So you toured. You've done a lot of touring. Uh, just bits and pieces. I mean, just like taking breaking over to like certain parts of Scandinavia and stuff like that in the early eighties, and that was a hype. That was that was like you know, it's like one minute I'm like bloody breaking in Power Square and bloody concrete and stuff, and next yeah. minute I'm bloody doing three shows a day, and you know, yeah, yeah, and like just just getting that. That really took my level up because you know the amount of dancing we had to do was like I'm just traveling around Denmark and stuff like that. Mm. I got to know some really good friends and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. you know. Right. Did you ever go to New York or with the two life crew thing? Any connect no, with Miami? No, no. I mean I've been to Miami, but I've not not during those times. Uh, Drew Flex and IROC of yeah. Mighty Ethnics went out there and just chilled there for a while yeah. and stuff like that. But Dave's a cool guy. I used to go and hang out with him on the base and stuff like no that. No way. I remember because I think he got involved into DJing through coming down to London and yeah. seeing what was going on here. That's crazy. And yeah, and then going back up there, and uh, he was on the next level. I mean, I probably saw the essence of Miami bass being made at that yeah, point. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because he was he was from LA, and he was into really that kind of like you know the, that electro yeah that electro yeah. kind of planet rock and stuff like yeah. that. I remember the first time he's the first person I see play play a record backwards. He got uh, a bowl and put it on his turntable and like a bit of blue tech, turned the head of the the stylus upside down and then played the record backwards and stuff like that and, what and i think you know just seeing that in the early days and just stuff like that it was like jeez what the creative being being that. on the airbase you've got nothing else to do but just go yeah, yeah. <laughs> he must have been just like the go-to dj guy there yeah but i think you know a lot of people didn't realize because he'd be playing at carnival with us and stuff like that yeah. and not a lot of people you know just you know <laughs> what did, how, how did it feel to be to be it, a part of that inception and for Two Love Crew and yeah. that whole scene to blow the way it did? Well, I think, uh, I don't know, I don't know if it's because Drew used to be the rapper yeah. and Dave used to be the DJ. Yeah, yeah. And But they used to be poppers. And yeah. obviously growing up in LA, popping was natural to them. Mm -mm -mm. So they, you know, like early 80s, we're having like first rate people who could pop yeah, <laughs> and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah, and lock yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, I remember they used to come down and they used to be like uh, Dave, Skeet and Drew and there'd be like three of them that were like all doing their, you know, stuff like this. Mad. And so it's, yeah. Mad. <laughs> so we got exposed to the, the popping scene really early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really early and, and at a high level, you know, not just watching what like the UK kids do, it's mm. watching like guys from the States over here doing it and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So first hand. First hand, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So it's, yeah, no, it was good. It's just, I used to look at them and just, because that was the time I was really into like, you know, you got to remember music like The Message and all that was sort of out and we was more into miming the record and mm. like, you know, uh, kind of cut through the park and, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. keep my hand on my gun. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the baseball bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all that stuff. So we used to mime out the records doing robots and crap like that when, you know. <laughs> I remember my friends used to be, be around my house on like on the weekends and stuff like that and... These days with us to smoke or whatever. Mm. And I was the entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> Put on a message and start dancing for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of like that when I have a few drinks. To be yeah. <laughs> Don't know about the message. There's no real message in my, uh, yeah. my main. But it was just like that, you know, like uh, the, play, the breaks and mm. these are the breaks. Because yeah, 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 yeah. we came from, you know, like I think f for the UK, hip hop came through jazz funk, a lot of it, you know, mm. like. One minute you're listening to... Northern Soul kind of stuff too, huh? No, I think it was more for us. Like, it was more like, because we went through that whole chic good times mm. and Sister Sledge thing and, yeah. you know, like being the so boy. And, and then, you know, that kind of Earth, Wind and Fire thing 
went in, you know, you started getting records like Tyrone Bronson, the mm. Smurf coming in, mm-hmm, Yellow mm-hmm. Magic Orchestra, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. and stuff. I remember doing robots to Yellow Magic. Do, 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 mm. do. <laughs> Craftwork, was, was that, uh, were they heavily influencing? Y- yeah, I think, the, you know, bits of Craftwork, but I used to listen to more stuff like Yellow Magic yeah, and yeah, like yeah. more kind more of bit, stuff. more groovy, more funky, yeah. you know, you can boogie yeah. down to town. Yeah, 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 Let's yeah. groove down. I can't sing. Hey, <laughs> come on. I um, oh, I'll put a few bit of compression, but also tune yeah. if I... <laughs> Needs it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, tell me, me too. Um, you, you uh, again, you, you've, you've alluded a, mon- a bunch of times to, to have been the first in situations where um, American imports and people mm. from the States or other countries and, and records were being passed direct from these places. Yeah. And, and the, again, I guess it does hop back to the, the, uh, the, the geographical place of yeah. the West. Uh, Futura came over. And yeah, I know you've told this story a bunch of times, but no, that was the, with the clash and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, but you were there. You took the first photo, had the Ling piece over the top. Of yeah, it. that that went afterwards. I did the Ling way way after. You did know? you? Yeah, it was way uh, after. Way okay. after. That was way after. Like, yeah, I was just like, oh yeah, because you know, it's my hanging out spots yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So yeah, you just you see stuff like that and yeah. all that. But uh, yeah, as you said, with the clash, they lived in Power Square and stuff like. Because yeah. apparently, uh, Rock City was staying there. What? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get to see it. This is what I've been told. So I don't know if this is truth or not. But uh, apparently, those came coming into the tabernacle. Yeah. Like, like, no way. Dude, well, I think when they first came over, they was with the Clash and stuff like. That. I don't yeah. know because I think Rock City came over to Olympia, didn't they? They did the National Panasonic. That's right. Yes. Yes. But yeah. they also came a year before then when it was just mainly all is the punk rock scene. So I guess that's kind of where the Clash. That's, lot, that was the conduit that brought them over. Yeah, I think that's the first time they came over. <sighs> Oh man, I wish I was there. So apparently those came into the walking into the tabernacle like with a graph on his back. I don't know. This is what I've been told, yeah. Folklore shit. <laughs> what? So I went That's there. Mad. I went there that day and I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why weren't I there? All and those I, times I'm there and I'm not there. I was, I was like, is this true? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. That's going to be embedded in folklore history. So, so it's like, you know, just stuff like that. Because, yeah, they... they they came over like I think they did the National Panasonic thing, obviously the American mm, Claren yes, 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 thing yes. or whatever. But uh, they also had a punk thing there, which I guess might have been Clash orientated or something oh, like that. Yeah. I don't know because you know they lived in Power Square, so yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, future, future. Uh, that I mean, this this has been a, again another yeah. folklore piece of the uh, you know. I'm just trying to join the dots here. Yeah, yeah, so, it's, so yeah. It's like, oh, and believe me, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep up. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. uh, again, just. You know, maybe, but, but maybe I'm think, going too fast. But I, th- I think the whole art thing in Notting Hill was, you know, I think a lot of the influence around there was from the hippies. Mm. You know, like they used to do a lot of murals, painting buildings and stuff like that, and just doing a lot of, you know, everyone was just into like painting stuff. What do they think about? What do they think about when you, the likes of yourself and foam and. and well, and well, we, we, were, we all had a negative attitude. I mean, really? We was like street kids. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, but I think a lot of them, because the. the the housing trust gave us permission to paint on all the sides of their buildings. Oh, right. And GLC were throwing money at us to buy paint. So... <laughs> really? Because when the GLC was closing, they you know, like they had to get rid of their funding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, everyone was putting in for grants. And so the Tabernacle got together and put in a lot of funding into, like, basically to do murals around the area and stuff like That's that, amazing. to do art projects and stuff like that. I mean, we got we got all got tracksuits out of it, linos and stuff like that. And Wow. You know, we had a manager in the UK as well where we were touring the UK, going around doing shows. And oh, so right. it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> so sick. Yeah. And this was kind of, I guess this was like a bit of a, a, a breeding ground for creativity. Yeah. At that time. But I think the negative thing, we was always like arguing with each other, you know, things like... We'd be doing shows, oh yeah, we want more, we want this, we want that. So we we was our worst enemy as well. Because you weren't appreciating the the time? Uh, I think just the negative thing like, uh, you know, like if we're doing shows and stuff, people want to get paid and Mm. and stuff like that. So it was like, and we was hungry kids, Mm. you know, we we had nothing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, you didn't have anything. So it's like, whatever you did, you know, that'd be like your food, (laughs) you know. I think there is a thirst for... uh, at the next level, or at least a commodity that allows yeah. you to progress. Yeah, and it's hard when you come from this, from a background where 
you have, you have nothing. <laughs> yeah. And you fight and flight. It's, yeah. it's crabs in a bucket, I guess, to, yeah. to, to, to yeah. a degree. I mean, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm only guessing for the and, time. And, you know, you're getting exploited every, yeah. everywhere you go because you don't know the business side of it. You know, you've got the talent, but mm. you haven't got the, you know, the mm. know-how and stuff mm. like that. So everyone's just exploiting. It's like when we went on, you know, we was probably doing free shows a day. We should have been getting paid loads. I don't remember loads of money. I just remember living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it was of a time. I mean, yeah. I, say that, I say that very loosely because... You know, there's countless stories of artists. I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. You, know? so you just don't think yeah. these things. Afterwards, do you? I had to go in the real world and just get a normal job. <laughs> you know, yeah. live like everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I don't know. I think like the touring stuff opened me. Good, you know, opened me up to the whole Danish scene. I watched the whole Denmark scene, sort of of O and stuff like mm. that. And it's quite kind of weird because we don't really get a lot of mention in their kind of scene. A few of them, few of them who recognise, recognise, yeah. Mm. But I kind of watch it and it's like, you know, from the documentaries, you don't get a lot of, you know. And I can look at a lot of Danish pieces and see a similarity to what I'd done over there mm. where they've they've replicated it to a certain mm. point of like, especially doing, I used to do all these cuts lines through, you know, my colour fills and stuff like that. Oh, and, I know. And then, <laughs> and then when I watch it, when I see their stuff, it's like, oh, they was all on it, were yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, But they're really, you know, I've got some really good... Uh, Friends there, you know, like it's kind, of, it's kind of weird because uh, I got to know people like Sketch and mm. these are like dominant, you know, the old school graphic yeah, artists graphic. over there, and like Crest One of the WAP Gang. WAP Gang's like my favourite graph, graph crew in yeah, yeah, Copenhagen yeah, 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 yeah. and stuff like that. But it's, oh, of course, I know they got um, Mowers and there's yeah, CMP. This, this is all before those guys, really. Yeah, wow. WAP, WAP Gang, were, I'd say, were the first dominant crew in Copenhagen. What, what, what? Um, in terms of techniques, I mean, you talk about. You know your your style and how it was influenced. Like, where where did who who influenced you in graph? Uh, I just bits and bobs. I mean, you know, like watching Wildstar, watching you know just bits and bobs. I was never really about graph. I was breaking was always my first. Love. I, I know. I, <laughs> graph I, was I something. It. So graph was always something I did. Like you know, I, I I wrote on walls as a kid. I loved art. And you know, like I remember just going out by myself. Just I used to like painting alone. I used to like. Let's go to Camus Swift and City. That was kind of your. Yeah, that was your line, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I was more tagging on there and stuff like. I remember we used to like hanging out with like Demo and stuff like that, and we just meet. Everyone would meet up on the lines and just hang out all day, rack along, drop off of shops, do a bit of racking, yeah. get back on, do a bit of tagging. Was know, it so? It's seasonal, you would say. It was something of yeah, the time. Yes, seas. Uh, just all of us. Just we used to just bunch of kids. We used to just hang out under the Westway, you mm. know, just having a laugh, you know. It's crazy that you say it like that because you know the influencing graph, you know. Yeah. It's undisputed, and and I don't know. Maybe it's because of the podcast and being the way it is. But yeah. you know, I'm glad you bring up the break dancing and 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 your role yeah. in that because it's you're celebrated as scam the graphite yeah. a lot. Yeah, which is yeah. nice that you you see it from a different point of view. Well, I kind of because you know, like my growing up, I was hanging around DJs always. You know, like in their houses. This is watching like early guys like Froggy being in Froggy's house and like seeing guys with you know record collections what people got now in sort of like early 80s yeah. you know and watching them cut up like bt express and stuff like that mm -hmm. you know just yeah. stuff like that and just watching them playing records and you know like uh mono man i don't know if you heard of mono he's he did like london bridge with uh bertram and stuff like mm -hmm. that did like a few of the rappers and stuff like that but they would like they were like the first hip-hop guys, you know, doing... They're like the older lot who kind of faded out, but where you had people like Dizzy kept going a bit, mm. bit longer and stuff like mm. that, so... Man, your legacy is insane. <laughs> legacy is insane. <laughs> insane, rich, mm. they all cite you in that, that the oh. period of their their lives as influential. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. Like, you know, as, as pals and as... Yeah, I look at them like, you know, uh, the young guys just part of the scene. You know, like friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you, you know, I don't think anything of, uh, you know, I don't know, just your homies, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but he's so like, when I see Rich, I remember like, because Rich is out painting now, and I was like, yeah, I remember when he was young. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I used to call him Johnny Apples. <laughs> <laughs> More in town. <laughs> I used to call him Oi, Johnny Apples, but you know, Rich, it's, it's, he's cool. <laughs> Anyone that you would say, oh, you know what? I, you know, I mean, obviously all of them at yeah. the time were pioneering. Yeah. Um, but anybody that you would you'd say yeah you know what they they really were going the distance hate hate, hate was good hate yeah i liked hate you know because it's hate was good i think they were all all of them were good you mm. know mm -hmm. everyone was kind of good you, at the time you might have had your bickering you might have your little rivalries but you know we'll be on that now mm -hmm. so it's like 
you know, yeah. it's like yeah. they're your homies. You grow up, they're part of your history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so you're part, as much as they're, you're, they're part of you, you're mm. part of them. Mm-hmm. So, it's, yeah. <laughs> It's a. It's funny what because uh, graffiti is egotistic. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, but that dampens as you get older, right? So you, yeah, you, you realise what you were beefing about was really nothing or whatever. Well, you know, your your teenagers, testosterone's going through your system, attitude. You know, yeah, yeah. what do you know? You know, um. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good to come out the other side, isn't it? Yeah, a, but to it's, extent. I think it's you know like a lot of people like b boying and stuff like that. A lot of people I get on with were my rivals. Mm. You know, it's like. They were the enemy, you know, but it's like yeah. they were part of, you know, you, you grew up together. Yeah. You've got a lot of respect for each other now. You've, you've been, you know, it's like it's like those, you know, when two people are rivals and they have a fight and then they become best friends. Mm. <laughs> it's almost like that. Mm, for sure. And you just grow up and out yeah. of it, don't you? And then yeah. you realise that everything that you went through as a kid, it, it helps yeah. you. Well, that whole rivalry is West London, South London. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, there you go. But, a lot of people are my best friends from there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like... He's funny. Yeah. Isn't it? And your heroes become... It's all on one big level playing field, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because I guess it's like footballers, you know, like two teams, they're against each other, aren't they? But mm. when they retire, they're like, oh, yeah, mate, how are you doing? Let's go for a drink. <laughs> yeah, smoking cigars on the porch. Or yeah, <laughs> literally like that, isn't it? Yeah. Apart from John Terry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Apart from that, yeah. I had a story that Michael Jordan smokes like six... Hundred thousand pound cigars a day oh, or some shit. shit. I don't know anything about that. I'm, yeah. I'm lost in, in the sports world. I'm lost. Yeah, no, I get lost too. But that's that was a story Mix Master Mike told me. Oh, okay, which is yeah. you know, insane when you think about it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything you would change? Any regrets? Uh, milking it. Milking it. <laughs> milking it for what it is. Going harder. Yeah, going harder. Milking it. Just really milking it. Just really like, you know. Uh, a lot of us didn't know what we were doing, and having that not having that knowledge was a limitation of what we could have done. Mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. I think uh, if we would have known what you know now, you could have pushed your level. You could have focused more. You didn't. We had a lot of distractions. Mm. You know, play. You know, it's like. It's that same argument, is it? When you get older, oh, no, I wish I went to college. I wish I went to school. I, get you, I wish yeah. I studied. It's that kind of, you know, if you went back now, you'd do everything a bit different. You'd be more mm. business focused. But, mm. you know, being like 14, 15, you don't have that mind. Mm. <laughs> I know what you mean. Everything's an adventure. I mean, mm. but that's the two sides of it. Everything was innocent. Everything was an adventure. And, you know, if you if you put that business side to it, it wouldn't have been fun. Yeah, that's right. So you'd lose your yeah, yeah. It's a tough one, isn't it? Being young and yeah. I mean, if you if you look at someone like Banksy, they're they're you know it's yeah. a company, it's a corporation, isn't it? So yeah. it's like, would he have that? Well, I guess he would because he's doing whatever mm-hmm. he's doing, but it's highlighting it too. But it's not the same. I don't know. No. Maybe he, um, he can't do anything without yeah <laughs> without being no. Yeah. But if I went down and did a piece under the. Westway or something like that. No one would re- really, you know, the normal person wouldn't blink an eye. <laughs> uh, in what context? How do you mean? As in the uh, average bod. What, but yeah, yeah, no, I, listen, you know what? When you when you done Trellick a, few, a couple of months ago, yeah, that was fucking fire. It was like... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was recognised by my... <laughs> okay. It was recognised. I don't see that. I don't say that. Yeah, and... Yeah. I always look at it like this. If... Uh, if someone says something shit, it's normally because I've done something wrong. If if no yeah. one says anything, it normally means it's all right. Actually, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, no comment. Okay, that's cool. That means it wasn't wrong. Mm. Then that's okay. But you're yeah, nah, man. Like, fucking hell. Like, when I saw that... I haven't just... painted for, like, a long time. <laughs> but when it, yeah, and that's, I think that's the thing, you know. It's an... Ev- I don't know. Because the... It's yeah, Dutch, Dutch Demo was like, oh, let's go and paint. Oh, he goes, I'm over. He mm. goes, let's go and paint. I was like... Oh, all right, all right, all right. I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, you have to, man. And I was like, oh, I only live around the corner. Let me just yeah. roll out of bed, get my paint, come down and say, right, let's do it. Did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. But, I mean, sometimes it's like, I went down there, they was doing the Save the Wall weekend. And That's the... Cause was painting. He goes, I've been there all morning. I was like, you what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like mid-afternoon. I was How like, long does it take you to do a piece? It takes longer now. Yeah? It takes longer now because I've relaxed. <laughs> yeah. But... I always like using, like, I used to like painting fast, you know. Mm. I don't want to be there five hours going, okay, still doing this. Do, yeah. You know? But 
kills the energy, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels... kills the energy. And I think it's like, you know, you're painting a piece for seven hours is like... I mean, people do it now. That's, mm. that's how long it takes. People take take weekends on it. You mm. know, like Caesar to spend like two, three days painting a piece, mm. but his artwork reflects that, you know? Yeah. And it's the same when I saw Causing. It's like, yeah, so but you look at his piece, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a sick piece. <laughs> do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's right. And you, and you can see the time put into it mm. where I'm like, I just want to go outline, fat cap, ksh- yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. like insane, Matt. He takes his time, doesn't he? He does. Yeah, he takes his time. He, he takes his time. Yeah. yeah, he takes his time. Yeah, um, and Zaki as well. Yeah. Like, I mean, but when you see those pieces, they're uh... my influence is Wildstar for this. I think Wildstar. It's uh, watching Lee paint and mm. got my headphones on, listening to music, and you just want to. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, you listen to music, and I think you're painting with music, and you're 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 painting to that tempo. Yeah, you know, I love you put, that. that's what I used to do. Put my headphones on, paint to that tempo. Shh. Mm. You're almost paint dancing. Mm. So. Mm. Ein said to me he didn't listen to music when he was painting. I found that really interesting. I was like, yeah, but I'm sure there are a lot of writers that don't. But there's something about a mood and a tone, yeah, that you paint. Or oh, well, oh, well, I guess you know. I mean, have, as a kid, paint, I had my headphones on all the time. Yeah, just like you know, you're on your BMX, you have got your headphones on, listening to like scratching, do, do, do. yeah, 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 or the bridge, or you yeah, know, yeah. just <laughs> grooving down the road. <laughs> so yeah, I think when when it comes to painting, you just put that thing. You, you know, we learned we imitated Wildstar and stuff like mm. that. So our mindset was like in that. <laughs> yeah, you, you wanted to be. You wanted to be. In the Bronx, uh, so you'd be like, "Yeah, how will they do it? Yeah, I want to do this and like, yeah, 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 yeah." <laughs> I think mine was Juice when when Juice came out. Yeah, that was, for me was like that that snapshot of life yeah. that I just not the guns and all that, but just the hip hop yeah. mentality. Did, what point do you find in your in your lifetime as an artist where you spend all your youth? Well, maybe not you so much because you you were born into the game, mm. like I said, but you do become it. You yeah. become the art that you 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 know you become the art that you you fight hard to replicate. All of a sudden, you become it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, feel, I don't know. I think it's just part of your DNA. It's in you. It's mm. like whatever you do is your personality shining through. You know, mm. it's like if you're an MC, you're, it's your personality, isn't it? Mm. Everyone's got their style of way of doing things. Mm. Yeah. And I, I think it's that kind of uh, swag. Some people haven't. You know, like you get those sort of generic mountain climbing bods, and you know. I do canoeing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. They, you know, when they, if they take on dance, they've got that mm. stiffness, mm-hmm. or you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like I do cricket. <laughs> do, 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 do you know what I mean? I Instead of like, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so it's that kind of yeah. yeah. You know, people. I think it's the music. It's mm. Definitely the music. I think the music's the essence of everything. Cause everything, it, yeah. Because it's where the flow comes from. You know, you listen and like you like. Government knows it. Corporations yeah. know it. Yeah, music is the soul. Yeah, isn't it? It's definitely, the thing definitely. I mean, that's what, what got me from a young age was the music. As I said, I used to pull up my record players to the window and play it out full blast. And I think growing up in Notting Hill, you know, where you had sound systems in the park every Sunday and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. You know, Mac the Knife used to roll out his speakers in there. Crazy. And you grew up in that environment, you know, for just mm. park jams and mm. stuff like that, and especially with the carnival and all you day. know, all day. And yeah, it's just music was very much a part of it. it you couldn't escape it, you know. It's like I remember you, you go past, and you'd, it's quite normal to hear people playing hip hop, beep hop, don't stop, and out their windows on from the fourth floor, and you just hear it loud and clear all, all, all across the park. Do you and miss stuff. those days? Yeah, because if you did that, now you get an asbo, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, it's just some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, every, everything now is like, I guess in a sense, London's bigger. There's more people. Yeah. There's more traffic. There's yeah. more. You know, it's a different times. Well, I think we're living in dangerous times at the moment, you know, like back in our day, we'd have a fight and that, that would be the end of it, mm. <laughs> you know. Nowadays, everything's on another level. It's like, and it's like, why is it on this level? Mm. You know, why are people this angry? Yeah, 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 it's true. <laughs> you know, why, why, why? It's still, it still troubles me now. Yeah. Like if we all got together and, you know, it's, it's, it's divide and conquer from a lot of yeah. angles. And if you all got together and didn't get so angry about it. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? It's, I mean, people got angry, but you just, you know, right, I want to fight you. And it's like, Arr. I can remember having fights and losing, going, go on then, finish me off. Mm, <laughs> do, yeah, do, yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to get like, it done with, yeah. Yeah, just, well, just, it's like, if, I didn't like the fact that if I got into a fight and they was getting the better of me and they started toying with me, I didn't like that. Mm, <laughs> so I'd either, I'd be like, either stop it or finish me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
I wouldn't be like it's I don't, old school mentality. I, I, isn't I don't it? want to be toyed with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. it's just like that's the biggest form of mani- being manipulated. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's some old school mentality, man, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? You know, yeah. even knock me out or just a mm. bit. So it's like, Arr. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pent up. Yeah, because yeah. I remember fighting. I remember one fight I had with some guy and uh, and uh, I think uh, he pushed me to. I was, I was, I was. You know, like I had to control this thing at a very early age. Uh, people used to press my buttons, yeah, and I would lash out. Really, <laughs> I would lash out like, and it's only when I got older that I, I kind of realised it. And mm. you know, like another kid told me, he goes when, when I was at school, he goes, everyone told me them to be wary of me. <laughs> like, really, because of your temperament? Just because I didn't realise it, but I guess it's the environment I grew up. But he was like three years older than me. <laughs> this guy goes, this guy's a bit of like he goes, he goes, no, he goes, he goes, yeah, everyone was like, yeah, be wary of him, but because. Uh, I can remember the older kids, they used to call me King Boxer at one point. They used to get me to fight other younger kids for no them way. and stuff like that. We had a reputation <laughs> scam, dog. Jeez. Yeah, but I didn't see it. But I think, uh, I didn't see it. But I think uh, people used to, because a lot of my friends used to, they used to get to me. They used to push my buttons. Like, mm. Then all of a sudden, it would be bosh. <laughs> bosh. <laughs> And I think it was that thing what got to other people. Mm. That, like, the message was spread <laughs> pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, that, if you push him harder, because I mean, there's been times I've tried to stop it. It's like, <gasps> and it's too late. <laughs> Connect. <laughs> like, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> but I feel better now. <laughs> you pushed too many buttons. You was like two hours giving me crap. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This little cog was getting tired and tired. But yeah, I've had that, like, you know, like... That's city lot, life, though, isn't it? Yeah, you know, city life. And I think a lot, of people, a lot of people could realise they could get to me because I didn't want to hurt anyone, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, no, stop it, push me, push me. And then they'll get to a point. And like, but that's, what I guess, growing up. And then when I got to, like, you know, I guess... 40? No. <laughs> 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 but I've done it, to, I've, to, I've switched on a few friends, like, just... And they're like, sorry, sorry, sorry. So just, you know, like, I think the last time it happened, I was with... Uh, yeah, the very, this was going quite a few years back. Two of my friends were, like fighting in my room, and I was like, "Stop fucking about! Stop fucking about!" And it was like, "Ah, oh, shut up!" <laughs> pushing each other. <laughs> Next minute, one's pushing him into the TV, and a pint of milk and a bloody can of coke's gone in the back of the TV. So I just grabbed the nearest one. I'm gone, and I've tried to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I've connected with him and he's like, oh, I was like, shit, sorry, sorry, sorry. And he knew I didn't mean it and he yeah. knew he went too far and stuff like that. So he's like kind of, but he's kind of pissed off because he couldn't retaliate because he knew he, he was in the wrong and I didn't really mean it. So he was kind of, so he wow. was, wow. We went down to like Labrick Grove and uh, his lip was out here like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like young 14 year old and this is when we just kind of left school. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you get a fourteen-year-old to eighteen-year-old or whatever, mm. it's a big day. And there's a little uh, eighteen, fourteen-year-old uh, guy telling me, "Goes, what school do you go to?" <laughs> <laughs> and my mate just switched on him because all you had to let go of his ego. Oh yeah, and then it'll... <laughs> so you had to let. He's like, he's like don't, get, "Don't get paranoid, don't get paranoid." Don't get paranoid. Like, but, the other, but, but the other kid was trying it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, so it's like. Oh, what school do you go to then? You yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, next question: How much money you got? You yeah, know, yeah, 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 and then it all. Yeah. <laughs> London life, isn't it? Yeah. London life. It's the way it was and, and in many respects still is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but I always had that kind of, I don't know. But I, know, I always hated seeing people get hurt. I don't know. Yeah. It just, yeah. I guess, seeing people get hurt is, I don't know, I just felt really, I just I just hate bullies, too, you know? Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, yeah. like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, this, there's a lot more of a, a zero tolerance to that nowadays, especially with yeah, the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's all, it, it, all of this is the truest documentation yeah. of, of scam, you see? You know, these, these conversations, these honest conversations about how things, how things were and how things are and what, 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 what made you become the person you are now. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I mean, I can look back at things and just like, you know, it's a lot of years, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of the years. Well, you know, and us talking about your history, you know, I mean, forgive me if I was back and forth and all the, but there's so much detail and so much. Mm. You were at the, you were at points in time which mm. only a few people can actually talk. I was there, or I experienced that, or yeah. this was London. This was the jam. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. I think I don't know. I think it's a. Uh, 
you know, because I remember looking for warehouses and stuff like mm. that to hold jams in and stuff mm. like that and going, it's just, yeah, it's, I think it's hanging around with older kids, growing up in that environment, you know. Mm. I can remember, like, just running around recording studios, just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah let's go to Virgin. They've got Asteroid Machine, <laughs> you know, Man. being chilling out in there and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're all right, yeah, playing the Asteroids, you know. Crazy. <laughs> just people passing you by, like. Yeah, just, you know, I always remember running around record studios. It's, it's places of adventure, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, and... You know, all having all this on your doorstep is, is you know, mm. like living in Power Square. I remember I was hanging out. I was hanging out with this one girl, and you know, her parents like, you know, she had spiral staircase. You know, like you, mm. you, you, you're next door to a millionaire, and you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 you yeah. know. So I used to live in Oxford Gardens for a while, and Branson was my bloody neighbour. So, no <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> but that was the dis- that sort of juxtaposition of of. You're growing up and, and West London, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, the rich, free, poor. Rich. It was very like across yeah. the road. Yeah, yeah, it was on your doorstep. So I used to used to mix with a lot of people. I mean, yeah. even going to my school, Holland Park was like really diverse. Mm. You know, you got people from South Kent and you got people from Notting Hill. Mm. So, I mean, Notting Hill was nice now, but yeah, it wasn't back then. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, it, was, it was still nice back then, but. Not where I lived. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 a, it's a very a very strange place for anyone that's never been to. Portobello Road and Notting Hill, it's a it's it's a it's a very it, it's hard to define it, isn't it? Yeah, because you still got that scene behind it still yeah. still lingers there a bit. It's yeah. still, it still traces of elements, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's right. You know, but you you wouldn't see it if you didn't know it. Yeah, that's right. You know? You'd just be oblivious, yeah. but you feel it. Subterranea, yeah. all yeah. that kind of scene, and because I mean, even All Saints Road, when I walk past there now, it's like mm. it's nothing now. You know, like to mm. the average person, it's just a normal road. But when you walk past there. You always used to look down there, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, just, yeah, out yeah. Of, just out of habit. You always look down there, or you're walking down Portobello and a train passes. You look up, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so, just, just you, what you do. It's just what you do. That's right. That's right. <laughs> like check out the train, see what's going through, or yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's why this when you see me at the train station, I saw a train. I was like, that's a nice shot. Let me take a picture. Yeah, of that. Yeah. Like, I caught it. I caught it. Mid photo. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to go down. Yeah, <laughs> it's good to see you in the neighbourhood. It's good to yeah. see you in the area. And brother, honestly. Yeah. More power to the scam yeah. man. It's been great having you over. No, it's been fun. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> more, my brother. More, cool. more. <laughs> Legends in the place. Scam. See, we we'll be chopping up forever. We we'll do it off the cameras. For fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't forget to share. Sharing is caring. All right. Television <laughs> app is out there. You stay lucky, people. Take care of yourselves. Big up, scam. See you guys. Peace. <laughs>